Melanie, welcome to the Retail Hope Podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. I am so excited. A little backstory so everyone knows is that um, we just moved to Oregon, I think, just over a month ago. And my girlfriend had said she had driven by this cute little stand and she literally was like, yeah, we're on our way to a hike. And we pulled over and it was like this most amazing bread and cookies. And, And at the same time, my best friend who lives here had already sent me one of your Instagram posts. And she's like, you have to go by. I'm like, God, that's so weird. It's two times in one day. So I drove the next day, picked up sourdough, cookies, and I forget what else. And I I can't even tell you, like I posted it on Instagram and like how many people commented and you and I've gone back and forth. And so I'm like, please come on the podcast. So here you are. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so excited that um, everybody's excited for my little stand. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, I mean, in reading your background, you know, it became clear, like I knew there was a story behind it, but it, you know, in reading your background, it was very clear that it's not your first time in retail. So before we get into it, tell everyone a little bit about yourself and um, a little bit of your background, and then we'll dive a little deeper into it. Okay. Um, let's see. So my name is Melanie and, um, yes, we have lived in, um, Jacksonville for about 20 years now on this little, we have about, mm, I think it's 1.5 acres. Um, and me and my husband own a landscape construction business and, um, him and I run that. I run the back end of it, all the payroll, all the um, scheduling, all the bidding and stuff like that. And he does the physical work. Um, we've been in business 19 years, um, on that end. Um, and then I did have a, an old fashioned candy shop here in Jacksonville as well for about, 10 years. I had that opened and, um, they sold the building. So it was just time to move on. I then, um, worked at Logos Charter School and I, um, started their career pathways program there. And I was there for about eight years. Um, and then last year, um, I was hit with just every kind of medical situation I think possible. Um, I had a couple back surgeries, a spine surgery, and then I was diagnosed with, um, LGL leukemia in February of last year, which was completely life changing. It is a very rare form. There's no cure. There's no nothing. It's just treatment to try to make me feel comfortable. Um, my immune system is always pretty much shot. So, um, I have no immune system. And so, um, I, um, stopped working last June because of this part of this, because I mean, you can't, you know, I I was in so much treatment and infusions weekly and I'm just trying to get a grasp on my new life. Um, I did do some grieving because how can you not after going through all of this? And, um, and then I just, one day I just woke up and I'm like, okay, I can't not do anything. I know I can't go to a workplace per se, because I can't be around a lot of people sometimes. Just my numbers just vary. Um, I have a hematologist here and I have a hematologist in Portland um, because it is so rare that they watch me weekly on just medications of what to do and what not to do. And so it was kind of a tough situation for me. And um I started just making bread for my husband because I was home and, and then, um, I got into sourdough cause it was intriguing. It was, it gave me something to, you know, like learn and focus on. And then everybody's like, you should sell it. And I'm like, well, I, I can't open a bakery. I can't put myself through that. I, I, some days I'm really tired and I can't, you know, function a full day. And then some days I have like this, you know, a lot of energy. And so having the stand, I was like, well, I can do what I can do when I can do it kind of a thing. And so that's kind of how the stand evolved. And, um, I didn't, I knew I couldn't like manage it every day because that's kind of, you know, a storefront vibe. So I was like, well, let's just kind of do an honor system and see how my community responds and, um, they responded. <laughs> That's the part that blows me. I mean, coming from California, like that would never happen in California. <laughs> like literally yeah. someone would pull up and li- they did not take the entire, like all the food. They would literally take the little booth, like off the street. <laughs> but I, yeah. 
you know, when you were going through your diagnosis, you know, you had said you had a couple back surgeries. Did did you have any feelings before, like something was off, or was, did this come out of the complete blue? Well, I um, with like the leukemia or the back. Well, so when I had my um, back surgery, it, it it didn't work, and I was paralyzed, and then I just got like extremely exhausted. And I thought, oh, it's probably just hormones, thyroid, you know, kind of a situation. Um, And so I was in the process of kind of getting all of that stuff checked out. Um, And then um, when my blood work came back, that's what it came back as. And, you know, you're just kind of like, wait, what? You know, I thought I had just had some, you needed to change my hormones, you know? Um, So it was mainly just really bad fatigue. Um, and then my body just hurts. Like my bones hurt all the time. Um, and so I have a pretty high tolerance of pain. So it just kind of, I just kind of let it go. You know, you just think it's just from, I worked, I used to work out a lot. I was a gym goer, you know? And so like, I just thought, Oh, I've just been working my, my muscles too hard. I didn't realize that it had something to do with, um, having cancer. When you had just touched on the the paralyzation after your surgery, which mm-hmm. you mentioned before, but I read it obviously in your bio. How did you, I mean, like, okay, those are two very big life-changing things. And mm-hmm. one, like, how long did it take for you to relearn to walk or did it come back gradually? Or is it something that you had to go through therapy for a long time for? Once, um, I, I had to go in for emergency spine surgery. So my disc just, I had three discs that they were um, working on and I, I don't know really what happened. Um, I had a really good surgeon, but, um, a couple weeks after the first back surgery, they slipped on my spine. So that was sitting on my nerves on my spine. So as soon as I went into surgery after that, I was able to, um, be able to walk a little bit more. It took me a, a couple of weeks with the walker and trying to, um, learn that. Um, but it wasn't anything like I couldn't, I had to relearn really per se. It was more just the pain. I couldn't walk without it just shooting, um, down my, um, legs or my, my back. And I still, my right side is still pretty numb and I still, um, am a lot of pain on the right side. So, when I bake, I have mats and sometimes I have to sit down, you know, because I do get tired. And so like, I was like, I can't believe you do all this, you know, baking. And I'm like, well, it's, it, it's a time consuming, but it's not, you know, there's a lot of like, Stuff. I'm able to take some rest periods in between that. Um, and then we did just buy a commercial oven and a mixer. So that kind of is going to help me not have so much at one time. Or yeah, like throughout I, the whole day. I just read this morning that you're only able to do two loaves a day. In fact, that you're, an hour, two loaves an hour. Yeah. It is crazy. And how much you kick out how much bread. I mean, it's like insane. But I want to, I do want to touch on your store that you had it, that was in Jacksonville. I mean, part of what I love, and I've said this a little bit on social media, is that what I love about Jacksonville is all these historical buildings. Like there, it, there's something so quaint and so, I don't know, it's, it's like a movie set. It's unreal. And then when you had said you had rebuilt this or, or refinished this, um, vintage candy store with the original, was it the original soda fountain fountain? We found a soda fountain and my husband refurbished it. And so, um, we were able to make old fashioned sodas and milkshakes and your phosphates and, you know, your cream sodas and all of these kind of things. And then, um, it was really cute. My, my walls were red and white striped and then we had candy jars throughout the whole store. And it just was, it was, it was so sweet to have these kids come in and literally like empty their piggy banks to buy, you know, these little penny candies I had. And, you know, we did it, um, I did it for the kids, you know, and, um, made sure it was, that they could come there. It was across from the park, um, kind of down on the main street, but you could walk through to the park. So the kids would always come after, you know, the afternoon nap and play at the park and then come get some ice cream. And it was pretty neat. 
Had you been in retail before or did you just decide to do the sense? I mean, you, you're, you and your husband have your business, but to open up a store like that, I mean, and without being a retail, it's like, that's quite a feat. No, I just, I just always get a vision and then I just, you know, pursue it. And I, I'm one that just goes for it, you know? And, um, I, I always put in my mind, like, what, what would I want? You know, like if I came to a farm stand, what would I want? Do I want, I want farm, you know, I want fresh bread. I want, you know, fresh cookies. I don't want something that's been sitting out here for days, you know? And, um, so I always think about that. And then I just listen to people. I get so many people reaching out to me and I listen to them and what they want, you know, and you probably see me a lot. I ask a lot of questions because ultimately this is about what my customers want. And I want to be able to fulfill that for them. And that's great advice for anybody in retail period. I mean, I, I know you can't, you can't make everybody happy all the time, but I think that listening to your customers is obviously a big piece of the puzzle. Um, how long you said you had the store for 10 years. Did the store, is the store still there? Did somebody buy it or did you just close it all together? And if you did, where is the soda fountain now? Yeah, um, we closed it. It's where the miners bazaar is now. I don't think so. Uh, right on the corner of um, the main street. And when you come in, it's the white house on the right hand side. Um, and so the soda fountain, we, um, well, we sold the business to somebody and they had it open for not very long, but um, she, she wasn't me. I hate to say that, but like she, you know, I was always down with the kids and, you know, and I was just really like, um, so hers didn't last very long because if you don't have the, you know, in Jacksonville, everybody's very, very nice and very like, and she came up from California and was just very like, um, funny <laughs> yeah. just very money driven, you know what I'm saying? Like money driven yep. and just like, this is how it goes, you know, and, and from a corporate world. And I'm like, this isn't a corporate world. This is little Jacksonville. And, um, you know, it's more about community. I will say that, um, and I've said this <laughs> to a couple of my friends, we're from California and there's not a, like there is, seems to have been an influx of Californians that came in during COVID and with the Californians coming in, it's no surprise that there is a lot of impatience, people honking horns, people, um, just what California, it's literally the reason why I left. And it's, it's, you know, being from California and I think battle, not battling, but I've had a couple situations where I've been like, wow, so this is going to be how it is. Like one of the stores, I'm not even going to name who it is downtown. I went in there to try and find something. And she's like, we don't have that. And I was just about to finish. And she goes, well, there's this, um, they were cutting boards. So I'm sure you know what store it is, but you know, she was, she was like looking down at me and, and she was like, I said, you know, I just need them because we don't have them in the Airbnb we're in and we're moving here. And she's like, let me guess from California. And it was like so rude. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, mm, there's a lot of you coming here. <laughs> and, so, and, I'm like, yeah. and it, you know, but I do, I seriously, that is the reason why I love California is like the entitlement is like at a point that I can't handle and the traffic and whatnot, but it is, I can yeah. understand why that little business did not, you know, if it, it is very family oriented here, it is very mm -hmm. small town. There's 3000 people that live here mm -hmm. and, you know, I could see why everyone loves it. Like I, I wish I could, we're going to be living in Medford, but I mean, there's something so magical about this little town, but with, with that being said, it, there, there is small town. It is not, big business, you know, this is the way we do it, you know, you know, no kids touching this, that, so I can understand why it did not work. But did, so did she take, she just closed down. She took the soda fountain and went yeah. her own yeah. way. <laughs> I think she, I think it went to like an antique store or something like that. Um, I don't know if it went in Medford. She tried to get me to buy it back, but I was like, what am I going to do with that? Like, <laughs> I know we refurbished it and, and, um, it was, it was, it was such a neat, um, piece, but, um, you know, it's, it was, it was time to move on and, and, um, 
in our lives, our girls were competitive gymnasts. And so it was time we were traveling a lot. And so, you know, it was just time to, to do something different. Um, it was that it. after. So yeah. when, when, how, so how long have you had your little farm and flower, f- flower and farm, farm and flower? You're never going to believe it since January. That's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. Quite God. Wow. Y'all, so Lisa yeah. said she saw your post on next door and you kind of put it out there. What do you think would, would you guys and, and people have come in and now it's like, I mean, you just hit a thousand followers. Yeah. I'm uh, almost 1300 now. Yeah. It, 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 I know a couple of people have fought, that have seen you through mine or following you because I have more people, like when I said, like I, I, I knew there was a story behind your little stand because one, it's the cutest little thing. And, you know, to see, you know, how many people are showing up every day. Like, I'm like, there's something here, but I, I, it's mind blowing that it's, it's, um, honor system. Because like I said, in California or any other area for that matter, this would never happen. So how, when you first started, so you, you're, I'm guessing your husband built your stand. Yes, he did. It's so cute. And when you did the, you, did you create the design, the graphic? Cause the graphic again, like your stamp on the bags, like it's all so well done. Yeah. Me and my daughter did that. Um, I'm all, I'm all about branding as you can tell and, but simple, you know, not like, um, busy. I don't want, I don't like it busy. And, um, so, and I want to be, I want people to remember, not just my bread, but the packaging. I don't, I, I can't tell you how many people take pictures of my bread. I actually just got, um, today some pictures that somebody took pictures of my bread for their Good Friday ad. And I was like, oh, because <laughs> I always have a cute design, usually a heart on my bread. And, um, so, uh, me and my daughter, um, designed the logo. I mean, yeah. and, Packaging is everything. And I say that a lot. I mean, it's like, you know, that for me as a buyer in retail and and the people that I advise, like you can have great packaging and it could not be great product, but yours is this beautiful mix of this fantastic, amazing bread and this incredible packaging. So when you first rolled everything out, like what did it look like? Did you roll out with as much as you did or did you start small with just a few things? Um, just kind of this, kind of what I did, um, I wanted to keep it simple. I wanted to have a good product. And so, um, I mean, my intentions were just to do like a few loaves a day just to kind of, you know, launch it out and yeah. And, um, and then just open, I was just going to open the weekends, but I needed to open every day to see kind of where it was going to lead. And then it just, every day is a, you know, everybody enjoys driving by and coming and, um, every day to just come and get fresh bread during the week. Obviously it's not as busy as the weekend. The weekends, I always have a line. It's usually for my cinnamon rolls, which I never thought would be a thing, but, um, people like to come in for the cinnamon rolls. Um, but, and I keep everything fresh, you know, it's all organic. Um, we have our own chickens for our eggs. I make my own vanilla, you know, just to have the, um, fresh product for everybody. And so, um, I love to play with new flavors. So it's kind of fun to, um, bring in new flavors and let you guys kind of enjoy it and give me feedback. But so you know, when you started with just sourdough and then when did the cinnamon buns and those insane cookies? <laughs> well, that's what I started with. Cause my, my, my vibe was like, Oh, I'm just going to do cinnamon rolls on, you know, like Saturdays and Sunday. That was my whole stand for like the people to come back from church, you know, and they can come and have cinnamon rolls. That was where I started. And, um, it took me a long time to kind of figure out my, a recipe. We've eaten a lot of cinnamon rolls and, (laughs) um, and then the cookies, I was just like, well, I'm just going to put out, you know, some cookies because everybody loved them. I would make them during the summer and, um, my girls friends would come over and they would just grab one and then grab another one. And then, you know, and then they started asking me to make them for them. I'm like, okay, well, I guess they're good. So let's try to sell them. And, uh, but just gonna, I try to do different flavors, but everybody always comes back. 
to the original chocolate chips. So and there's uh, sourdough, which I've never seen a sourdough. And I will tell you right now, and for those who are in California who know my client, Bristol Farms, which is a super high end, beautiful specialty grocery, they make this thing called the cookie, and it's a French. I think it's a French chef that created it, but it's Belgian chocolate as seasoned oh, yeah. on the top. But they're literally like an inch high and they're probably eight to 10 inches round. Those, and he has, I'm, my husband's like, I'm, I gotta say, this is a close, a close. Oh, uh, yeah. But, and it, it's like, that's why I said, I texted you, right? DM'd you. I'm like, please say, me you're making more of those cookies because like, we've already gone through an entire bag, which is frightening because I just lost all this weight. And I'm like, getting on the scale, I'm all, oh, it's climbing back on. And then I'm like, I know exactly why it's climbing. Oh, no. <laughs> and I, mean, I mean, I how often do you get to be able to enjoy these things? It's like, that's why I'm sticking by. So, when you did, do you, have you had any problems with people just coming and taking it and leaving and not paying? No, not at all. It actually like some people, I'll even get a Venmo and they'll be like, oh, sorry, I miscalculated. So here's your extra $2 or $5 or, um, uh, some people will be like, I didn't have any cash, but I took your eggs and I'll bring you cash. And they put it in my little notebook because I have a little notebook for comments. I don't know if you've seen that. And, um, I read those every night. It's so sweet. Kids draw me little pictures and thank me for my little treasure box. And, um, I think it's so cute. Like you have this little box that is like, just like these like little giveaway, like Trink- pop- yeah. and trinkets and well, because I don't know, as, as a, as a mom, obviously my kids are grown now, but like, you know, when you're trying to do something and your kids are like all up, you know, trying to distract you and you're just trying to read this and look at this. And so I'm like, oh, here's it so that they can kind of, you know, go through while you're looking at everything. And then, you know, kids always, rem- what are kids going to remember? My bread or a treasure box? <laughs> <laughs> And I, like I said, in California or I, many places, it would be very rare that somebody did not take off with stuff. Um, but there's one place, because I, I told my girlfriend about you this morning, and she goes to Ojai a lot. And she's like, the, the only place I've ever seen that is in like an o- Ojai. And she goes, and they don't even do Venmo. They just have like a basket and you leave cash. And she's like, how does no one take off with that entire basket? The honor system, which is what I think is so beautiful about this community is that, mm-hmm. you know, how you've done it. So you've now expanded, you have honey, you have the vanilla you make, you have pancake mix from your sourdough, you have the sourdough starter. What does, what is the next rollout look like? And, and how many, cause you've got n- now pizza, the pizza sourdough, which is insane. You have cheddar jalapeno, which is amazing. Can you tell I eat here a lot? <laughs> I looked her on top of my Top, top, of, top of our bridge is where I have everything. And I looked up, I'm like, oh my God, I am there like way too much. But what, how, like how many more iterations of sourdough are you looking at doing? And will they be one of those things where, um, what I love about some companies that they'll put something out, it's like, okay, it's retiring and there's a scarcity thing. And like, everyone's like, everyone's got to get it. It's like, get it now. It's the last weekend. It's retiring. What is that? Is that, are you going to be retiring any flavors? and? Well, I kind of, I kind of do mean a more of a seasonal, you know, like, um, I don't know if you were here when I launched my, um, like chocolate or my gingerbread, I had a gingerbread sourdough and, um, obviously that was November. I did, that's when I did kind of was working for your order still. My husband was building the stand and I'm like, come on, let's go. Like, you know, I was spending Thursdays and Fridays waiting for people because I had free orders. And I'm like, I'd love to just, we have a little door in the stand. I don't know if you've seen that. And that's where all my pre-orders go. So I do a pre-order every week. And then there's a door and I put, they have a little, and a pink bag, surprise, surprise. And then they have a, their name and it's tied. And then they pick up their pre-orders on the Fridays. Um that and well yeah so i do because i have customers in grants pass i have some customers in ashland customers in eagle point that you know they don't want to drive this far and not have what yeah they want um because the weekends everything just goes so fast i'm usually sold out by noon on the weekends um like this last saturday i put out 25 loaves and um i sold over 400 cookies this weekend 
Oh my God. And you're doing this <laughs> two sourdough loaves yes. at the time. I was exhausted. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, my husband was out of the town and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. But um, like I said, we got the oven. So we're, we're on the men's of trying to, you know, eliminate. And this oven will be 15 loaves in 20 minutes. Wow. So, yeah. So it's a big upgrade. But anyways, with flavors, I try to stay... Um, like I'm not going to do gingerbread right now, right? Because we're going into the summer. So I'm going to bring, I think I launched lemon blueberry this last week and that went really fast. And so some of those kind of things, I'm also working on hamburger buns, uh, hot dog buns. I just made some this last weekend um, for my husband to take and um, all of his friends to try it because they're always the little guinea pigs before I launch it. <laughs> um, and so I'll have all of those. Um, we'll have, um, Pizza, like pizza crusts, Ooh. sour. All these are sourdough. I don't use any yeast in my products. So trying to get a good fluffy bun is been a little bit of a challenge. And so we're trying, I'm trying to figure out a good recipe before I do those. And then my pizzas, I have to do them um, par baked. I can't sell dough with my licensing. So um, we'll have some pizzas out there. Um, so just kind of you know, building it on the summer. Um, and then anything I do, like I just made some whipped honey this morning. Um, and that's kind of, I just packaged that. So I think in a couple of days that'll be out along with some creamed, um, maple syrup kind of thing. So you can put it on your toast. I try to get stuff that will go with the bread. Well, look at you add on sales. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just nice to kind of have some fill-ins too, because yeah. sometimes I do sell out and there's nothing I can do. I can't go and hurry up and make a batch of um, bread. It takes 48 hours. My cookies take 48 hours. So like, I can't just be like, okay, I'm going to go make another batch of cookies. Um, they take a long time because they ferment. Do you, I just had a question and I just, of course, forgot it because this is what happens when you're old. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, you had also said that you're going to bring in wildflowers, which I'm super, because I just discovered Fry Farms and it's like, yes. I'm obsessed. I don't know. It, this living here has completely changed a lot of how I shop and like, how I've slowed down and I've always loved farmer's markets and I guess they don't pop up here till they get warmer because it's still relatively cold here. But I will be at the farmer's market. You are? The which one? The Jacksonville farmer's market. That's May. Mm-hmm. So excited. I, I'm so yes. excited for that, for that to start up just because that's, I love farmer's markets more, like more than anything. It's cute because it's a very community small um, farmer's market here in Jacksonville. I'm so excited. So I has got the flowers now because I asked him a couple weeks ago and they're like, oh, they're going to get ready. And it's like, they're the sweetest little bundles. And it's like, when you said you're going to carry wildflowers, I'm so yep. excited. Like, it's yeah, we have a greenhouse in our property on the side. And so we'll have vegetables and um, flowers. Oh, my God. I love mm -hmm. how it's like changing. And this is OK. So you started in January. You've gone through winter. We're going into spring. You're changing your 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 seasonal produce and seasonal offerings. You do, do when you're looking at a calendar, are you scheduling any of this out or is this all intuitive? It's intuitive. You know, it's just, um, I think about what I would want at what time, you know, like, uh, it, well, summertime, everybody's going to be barbecuing. So why not launch buns, you know? And so I, like, I don't know how they're going to go. And like this week I did, um, my pre-orders, I did a Guinness beer bread. So, um, I sold a ton of those. Um, and I'll probably have some out in the stand. Um, sometimes if I make extras, I'll put them out in the stand, but, um, my pre-orders sometimes aren't the same as what's in the stand. Um, cause I kind of, I don't know. I want them to be special, special as well. Yeah. And try to, and I may open pre-orders because I always sell out easily because um, I give myself a cap um, of how many I could do because I have to do them and the stand. So Thursdays and Fridays, it's they're like really long days because um, I'm prepping for both. But yeah, I just kind of think about what I would want at this time. And then, you know, all of my jams that I make 
jams and jellies is all, um, I try not to use any pectin in it. Um, I just use all natural berries, organic and, um, you know, my jalapeno jelly, I do have to make it obviously a little thicker, but everything is just organically grown. And, um, you know, people really enjoy that as well. God, I, you know, I, that's what I just, what I did for you is like, you're not a baker, like this is something you just learned as a hobby. And now you're taking recipes and you're tweaking them and you're making other things. And it's like, that is crazy to me that like, that you, you innately have this without any kind of training at all. One of the things I did notice on your sticker was that this is not prepared in a commercial kitchen. Is that part of the licensing that you have to put that down? Yeah. Yeah. They make me um, do that because it's called a cottage bakery. And so there's different rules that we can, that we have to apply by, by like, we can't sell anything that has to be refrigerated. That's why I can't do pizza dough. Um, anything like that, but we're working on it. We may do a commercial, um, commercially because I just made a part of my house, my bakery room. So I do have a separate room that I do everything from now. Um, just, it's just easier for me to just have it all in one spot than all over my house. It was in my kitchen. And so now when we get the new oven, since it's, I don't know. It's it's an oven that's more of a taller oven, not like an oven that you would have in your in your kitchen. And so we're um, getting the electrical put in now, and we should have that next week. That's a major. I love that. Mm -hmm. With all of these expansions, where like like if it keeps growing, like one thing I keep thinking of is you didn't want to do like go back to corporate world because of being tired because of the leukemia. Like what, what does it feel like now with doing Does it, is it feel different than when you had a corporate? Is it, is, is it you're finding you're not as tired or is it still taking out of you and you're going to have to curtail your baking or your days or however work looks for you now? Well, we just kind of, um, that's why we bought all of the commercial equipment is to help me. So, um, like my mixer behind me is a huge mixer, 30 quarts. I was baking that my kitchen aid was five quarts. So now like, like just right before this meeting, I did a batch of, um, cookies. And so I did, uh, 300 cookies. And so I'm in the middle of scooping them and then I can, they'll kind of ferment and, so I can do that all at once. Does that make sense? So like today is kind of a full day of that. Um, and then with my sourdough, um, the bread I can bake, it'll take me 20 minutes to bake 15 loaves. And, um, that's all I'll need on a regular day. And then the weekends, so you just probably have to do two or when I do farmer's market, obviously I had to do more than that, but I can plow those out rather than like, it's like, huh. I mean, it's a lot on your plate. Like you make the jam, then you're going to do mm -hmm. more markets. <laughs> like, holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, but you know, it's, we enjoy it, you know, and, um, it keeps me, I'm, the, I don't like to not be busy. And so, um, going through, cancer and treatment and, um, the weeks I have to have infusions, sometimes they just, I get really sick and in bed for a couple of days. So like to know that I can just say, okay, no bread today. I'm not, I don't have a bunch of employees. I don't have a storefront. I don't have anything where I'm like, you know, I, I have to do this if I'm not good, but I, I'm, I told my, my doctor told me if I stay home more, I wouldn't have to have infusions. And so I kind of just been staying home and kind of staying to myself or not myself, but, you know, just staying away from big crowds. And, um, but I'm still able to do things and not sit in front of the TV and just think, you know, I'm just going to sit here and, and wait for something. There's yeah. nothing, you know, I just got to still keep going. And so, you know, during bakes, I set timers so that if it is a day where I need to lay down, 
my timers will go off and I'll get up and take the bread out and rotate it and then go back and lay down. So it just depends on the day. I never know. You know, some days, like I said, I'll wake up and I'm just fine. And then there's other days that I am exhausted. And my husband helps me so much. You know, he um, will come home from work and he'll do all, usually all my dishes because, you know, they're piled high because there's so many. And um, he always, he'll, he helps me load the stand every morning and before he goes to work and, and he takes it down for me. And, you know, it's, it's a team and we work really well at that team. And, you know, if I didn't have him helping me on some of those things, I don't know if I could do it. Cause everybody's like, you need to open a storefront. Oh, and I mean, it, obviously it's a dream because everybody has a dream of a storefront, right? Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know where it's going to lead. And well, I think why, why so many people have reached out. So why so many people have asked me so many questions about it is because it's a different way of having a business and it's not a brick and mortar and you do have the time to do it yourself and create your own. And, and I think that's why it looks, my girlfriend in Hawaii was asking me, she's like, you know, this is exactly what I want to do. I, you know, I want to slow down and this is something I can do in my spare time and have it outside of my house. She's like, what do you think the, <laughs> what do you think the icing's made out of my, you're in Hawaii. It's, you're, you're not going to be able to put anything dairy outside of your house. Like just, yeah. <laughs> well, we do have, um, I'm working on that right now. Uh, what my next, you know, with it, cause obviously that's been a big question because you know, I do keep stuff out, but two things. One, it's been cold, as you know, and so it hasn't been a big issue. And in, in the farm stand is a cooler and that's where I keep my eggs. Um, and there will be, um, uh, a cool or a ice pack in there once it gets warm. But I think I'm going to bring in another cute little rollout, um, cooler. And that's where I'm going to keep probably my cookies. And, um, when I do cinnamon rolls, the icing, but like I said, they sell out so fast yeah. during the weekend that I usually don't have an issue, but I'll probably just put them in the, the cooler, um, just to be safe on those kind of things. Um, especially and in my cookies. Cause I noticed the other day, the sun was right on my stand and I was like, mm. Okay. So it's just a vault, you know, just, there. yeah. And it's just, we haven't had too much warmness yet, but, um, I was like, mm, yeah, I don't really like that. And then with the bread, 90% of the time I only stock it. And then the rest of it's cooling in, in, in my bakery room. And so I'll watch it and I'll go out and check it and then I'll restock it. And so that there's not all the bread is not out there in the bags. Cause I don't like them sitting in the bags and getting all the condensation on them either. Do you, what do you, do? have you had much, like at the end of the day, do you have a lot that's left or are you pretty much sold out? That is like, that right there is the best business plan ever. Yeah. The fact that you sell out to the people. Yeah, yeah it's all 99% of the time it sells out. Um, and then if it doesn't, I will put it in the freezer and cause it's bread. And so my husband eats a lot of bread. And so I just throw it in the freezer. Poor guy he never gets fresh bread. <laughs> I'm always like, Oh, there's some in the freezer. Um, but, um, and then I just do the fresh batch the next day. Well, like our crew, like today, my granola, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you're living by me somewhere, but for some reason they cut the power yesterday and I was like, are you kidding me? I have granola in the oven. Well, then it shut off all my timers and I oh. totally spaced it. So then my granola overcooked and I was like, so I just put it in containers and gave it to our crew. <laughs> um, so, cause it wasn't sellable. I didn't think it didn't pass my, my expectations. So I just gave it to them. We're over on old military. Um, oh, okay. So we're, we're not too far down a little, but I, I, you guys have had loss of power a couple of times where we've still had power. So it's, you know, far enough away from, from the power things. Um, did you, for those who are listening, who are thinking about doing something that like this, what are some of your pieces of advice, like first steps? I don't know. You know, and I've had a lot of people ask me that in the last few weeks and, you know, the first thing I'd say is go for it. You know, like, don't be afraid. I think every, 
everybody gets too afraid and gets very um, uh, intimidated. And, you know, if you just start and start somewhere and um, do do what you want to do and do it, you know, in like a, a minimal and build on it. You know, um, I kind of, I keep track of everything I sell and I keep track of everybody's just everybody's comments and, and try to build it on top of that. And, um, I think the biggest thing is just don't overthink it. Just do it. I love that. And a licensing, do, the, do you suggest getting the license first or kind of testing it out before you go through the process of li- licensing? I know that's a tricky question, but that is a tricky question. And, um, that would be the, the one thing is to, to check your laws. Cause it, it, Cottage, it's called a cottage law. A lot of people don't know about it. Um, Oregon is a little bit stricter than, surprise, surprise, than a lot of um, other states. Um, But if you just Google cottage laws in whatever state you're in, and it'll tell you what you can sell and what you can't sell. Um, Like, because like cinnamon rolls was a big thing. I couldn't do a cream cheese frosting. Um, I just, they don't let you sell with cream cheese. I don't know why, but, um, so I was like, okay, well then I got to figure something else out for a frosting. And like, if you do a focaccia, I couldn't do like any cheeses on top. It has to be like in something like, yeah, I have my cheddar cheese inside my bread cause it's cooked and things like that. Um, so checking, what you can and cannot sell is a big one because there's a difference between the cottage and a commercial kitchen. Um, so well, checking I think your the temperatures from working in restaurants, I remember them going through with a thermometer, like mm-hmm. coolers and through, you know, like all of that. So I'm guessing that that is part of it with the cheese or dairy. Yeah. Like no meats or anything like that. Like the pizza sourdough I put out. Um, I've been wanting to try that for so long, but I'm like, I can't put like pepperoni. I can't put meat. So I'm not going to do it. But then all of a sudden I'm like, well, then just take out the meat, Melanie, and just, you know, do the seasonings and the cheese. And yeah, that was pretty spot on. And, um, yummy. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I bake it, my husband was like, oh my gosh, that smells so good. I'm like, and now. Um, you like for everyone that knows or for the one that has listened to this, I, you know, when I went up there, I happened to meet you cause you were bringing out bread and I was like, the pizza was sold out. I'm like, Oh, I wish there was pizza. And you're like, I have some dishes came out of the oven and you went back in the house and you bagged it for me and brought it out. I was like, so grateful. Cause I, it, it's like, that says a lot about anybody that owns a store. That's like, you know, like, hang on, let me go do this for you, which I found so sweet. And it's also like, thank you. Cause it was so delicious. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. I always ask people two questions at the very end. One of them you already answered, which was the advice. The other is where do you find inspiration? Cause anybody that does anything creative, usually you pull inspiration from something. Oh gosh. Well, Obviously, as you can tell, I love marketing. I love, um, uh, I don't, I just, I like people. And so like, I like to make people happy and I like to bake obviously. So I bake a lot. And so, um, putting those two together as my marketing and baking has been fun because I'm able to put it all together. Like, um, I'm not even familiar with social media a whole lot. Like I know how to, you know, um, just be on it, but like learning right now, a whole new world of, um, well done by the way. Thanks. Of just keeping people engaged, you know? And, um, and then obviously there's a lot of sourdough people and networking. So, watching people's just how they do things, you know, and, and what they do and, and getting, figuring out, Hmm, I I can do something like that. And then, um, just engaging in my community has been, it's just been wild. You know, I've been here for so long and I'm learning my neighbors. I didn't even know we're here. And, you know, so, um, just all of that, you know, and just, Realizing that life is hard, but, um, you know, you can keep going and, um, it's okay to have your downtime, but also to, to keep going and realize 
that, yeah. <laughs> I've I, definitely <laughs> I love your story so much. Like I am so honored that you're allowing me to tell it. And cause I know you said you, you were relatively private about it cause you didn't want people to come visit you just because of your, because you were sick. And it's like, I am honored that you're allowing me to tell your story. Cause like I said, like there's something about it. And I, you know, even though I've only been here a month, I was like, I, there's something about it. Like I, I know good retail and it's like, it's good retail. (laughs) Oh, I appreciate that. It's it's been, it's, it's been fun to, 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 to do it and to see people's reactions. And it just, when I go out and fill my bread, it's just, it, there's always somebody out there and it's just nice to hear, or if I hear comments or, you know, I see people sharing all my stuff. It's just like, sometimes I look at my husband, I'm like, how is this real? Like what, I always ask him, what is so different about what I make than what every else makes. I mean, there's a lot of bread people. Um, but, hmm? It's made with love. Oh, thanks. Yes, it definitely is. And um, it, it won't go out unless it's, you know, meets that expectation and that people are going to enjoy it. And it has to look good, right? Because nowadays everybody takes pictures <laughs> and posts. And <laughs> um, let everyone know what your social media handles are so they can go and follow you. And if you have a website, go ahead and we'll make sure the note the it's in the show notes as well. But just for those who are listening that want to write it down. Yeah. So I don't have a website quite yet, um, but I'm on Facebook and Instagram both um just farm and flower yeah farm and flower f-l-o-u-r yeah thank you so much for your time i so appreciate it i love the story and i know our listeners are going to love this as well oh i'm so excited and you know i'm always here if people have questions um i've been answering a lot of questions on how to get started um i'd be more than i don't know it all but i can um you know help people along the way if they need it the next job is going to be a consultant (laughs) <laughs> that is actually my dream job is to just open businesses and, and, um, build them and then move on. But, um, I, I think I'll just stick with baking right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.